Good evening everybody. We have first in the house Carol this evening and another Carol. Hello Carol Clark, hello Carol Parsons. Hope you're all well. Hello Francis, good to have you join. So another Francis, two Carols, two Francis. Hello Francis Watkins, hello Francis Blackmore. Isn't that bizarre? <laughs> Hope you're all well. So tonight we're going to be looking at using crimping chain which is this beautiful shiny chain that you can crimp your beads onto and it's a great way of also using up any odds and ends beads that you've got as well hello Gemma thank you for joining hello Jane so I think what we'll do is we'll go straight to the overhead and we'll start to look at some samples hello Zara and Pingu <laughs> right I've got it on a slightly um, more distant angle so that you can see the whole beadboard in a moment when I'm actually doing the crimping. Now, Francis, I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> I hadn't thought about this before, but these are upside down lights, aren't they? Upside down traffic lights. It needs to be green, red and green amber red doesn't it hello sue it wasn't intentionally traffic lights anyway so this is one of the crimping chains that i've done this is using one of the rondel boxes you can see how well used mine is i'm going to be putting more in the thread available yeah i thought so and you can buy the crimping chain as a bundle as well with all of the components in it or you can buy it by the meter as well hello Val thank you for joining you can also make some nice dangle earrings I'm going to show you how you make some loopy loop ones as well let's just have a look now this one I must have done this on create and craft because I haven't finished it and I can only presume we ran out of time so you can do so many different colour combinations. No traffic lights in this one. So these are all colours that are out of that box. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'll show you. I've got a few other samples to show you as well. So let's just push those to one side for a moment. Here's another one that I made earlier. I mean, obviously you can make them fuller with beads if you want to. All I would say is when you're designing it, think about the fact that you don't see a lot around the back of the neck. So there's no point wasting your best beads in a spot where you're actually not going to see anything. Now, this particular one, for those of you that watch every week, this was actually the wavy bracelets tutorial so i've actually used two strands of the chain it's getting a bit closer and done the jump rings in there as well so that's another food for thought hello linda right i'm just going to hang these up because i made rather a mess and then we'll get stuck straight in now i'm going to do a slightly different design tonight just to give you a different edge on it really i've also i have got more crimping chain on order i've also got the golden colored crimping chain on order as well so that should be hit in the next week or so now let's just go and have a oh i nearly knocked everything everywhere so you don't have to have a bead board, but it's really, really useful. If you don't have a bead board, then a bead mat or a tea towel and a ruler would be sufficient. So to begin with. Oh, you like that? I'm glad you like that. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Trisha. So to begin with, what I'm actually going to do is cut the chain i'm going to make it 18 inches now unlike tiger tail where you need a bit extra you don't actually need any extra on this one and just bear in mind that obviously you're going to have your clasp on there as well so i think i'm going to do eight and a half each side 
and I'm going to use my memory wire cutters. You're okay to use your ordinary cutters, it's just like anything, it will blunt them after a while. Now, for those of you that have seen these in the thread, they are absolutely gorgeous. They're little Tree of Life charms, and this one is the Carnelian Tree of Life charm. So I thought, you know what, let's mix it up a bit. Let's put a charm in the middle. I've actually got the gemstone chips. Now, the, there's still some of the gemstone chip boxes. Mine's slightly different because I've added my own, but that's another great one to buy to do lots of these. Hello, Jackie. So first of all, we'll start with the centre. So I'm going to pop the tree pendant on there and we really want it to stay in place so that beads don't suddenly disappear. So I'm going to pop a bead on either side of that. I'll talk you through the tools that we need as we go. Now I thought, wouldn't it be lovely if we could use some carnelian chips? So the chips actually fit onto the chain, which I was really chuffed with. So I can't promise that all of your gemstone chips that you've got will actually fit onto it but certainly these do um, and I would imagine they would in that bead box that I've got as well for sale. Now a bead board is a wonderful visual tool for designing so you might actually want to do a little bit of designing and just put group beads together just to see what sort of design you'd like to begin with and the good thing is you with the bead board is you can do that without actually wasting any time doing your project first of all and then make your changes along the way now these are like a smoky a smoky quartz sort of color now I'm going to make the middle bit a little bit bigger just really to give it a focal point as well so let's find the middle of that and I'm going to pop a little seed bead on each end because it's just adding a bit of an accent to it. These are size 8 seed beads. You would definitely not get a size 10 seed bead on there. But I'd love to know how many of you have got crimping chain and how many of you have actually used it. Uh, would love to see any designs that you do, either that you've got or that you do since the tutorial and pop it in our beaders group because we are missing you all posting. We haven't got a huge amount of posts this month. You've all obviously been busy. So we'd love to get the inspiration going again on that. Right. So what we'll do first of all is I'm going to crimp this side and then I'm going to let the weight drop. And crimp it the other side. Now I like wherever possible for my crimp beads to be facing the same direction. We'll also, if we've got time, we'll have a look at using crimp covers as well in the mix. Thank you, Linda. Linda's put in the link for our beaders group. And don't forget, we choose winners at the end of the month. And I choose a giveaway winner as well, which has been a make that's been inspired by one of my tutorials here or in YouTube so you know keep posting you could win something or get some recognition so I'm gonna actually have it one and a half inches from here from the end of the last bead so Frances hasn't had any of this chain but she fancies giving it a go Frances I will bring some with me when I see you next I think I think you'd rather like this, providing, of course, the traffic lights are going in the right direction. Francis doesn't like the traffic lights upside down. 
Um, Jackie made some anklets last year with the crimping chain. Please share, Jackie. Pop your pictures if you've got any. And Sue has as well. Fantastic. And likewise, Sue, if you get opportunity to share. I must say that Sue is probably one of our one of our people our lovely people in the group that interacts so well and for that we're so grateful for her sharing all of her wonderful makes so i'm going to keep this just simple with just a little bit of a gemstone chip and i mustn't forget the seed bead Now, as you're all on and I'm doing this, I've got a little bit of an announcement to make that's going to be coming up in the thread at seven o'clock. Now, we are having our first social meetup. And if I remember correctly, it's Saturday, May the 20th from 12 to 4 and it really is there for us to sit and have a chat for us to do some beading i'll be doing a demonstration there'll be a raffle um we're going to be making homemade cakes tea and coffees available now the tickets are only five pounds and that includes all of your refreshments and your cake and your demonstration as well now we're based in royal wood and bassett we are limited on numbers we can have quite you know it's quite a sufficient space but we can't really go over a certain amount of numbers so if you want to come along all you need to do is just follow the link on the post and actually book your space on my website and i'll send you an e-confirmation but we are super excited now we have a team meet every week um, with our lovely ladies that manage our beaders of beads by beaders group beaders of beads by the chill and it will be so nice to all meet up because we haven't all met up in person before we've only met up every week online as as a collective group that is yeah me too francis me too i think it will be really exciting now i've made a mistake because i'm trying to do two things at once now can you see i've got seed beads on there but not on there now i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit um where are we zoom there we go that's a bit better isn't it now can you see on this one i've got seed beads on this one i haven't so it's like i said before it's really good to make mistakes not necessarily good but it's good that you see my mistakes live because you can see how i attempt to get out of it now i've made a mistake so i'm going to squeeze the crimp bead at the side i've got to squeeze the other one as well and remove it now it doesn't always work but 99 times out of 100 it does oh fantastic so sue and obviously we knew linda was going to be there and i did get a sneaky a sneaky um update from linda that sue would be coming as well because they are sisters so that is that'd be so lovely to meet you all so if you wish to bring a friend with you please do so you know i know everybody doesn't always find it that easy perhaps going somewhere different or meeting new people but rest assured that if you do come on your own you will not be on your own we're all like-minded people and we're a social bunch we really are so but you can bring a friend with you please feel free to bring a friend perhaps your friend might do 
other crafts so you know they could always bring their crafts with them if they want to enjoying the tea and coffee there's a fairly um, close car park as well which is just up the way and it's quite it's quite a small town but it's a very pretty town it's very nice how we're doing there oh fantastic carol and rhoda are going to come together brilliant no that should be really really lovely Right, so it's coming along well. I'm just going to, did I pop, oh yeah, I've already got a crimp bead on there. Whoops. I'm trying to get another gemstone that matches the same size. Yes, it is fab. I'm so chuffed. So once you obviously book online, see, I'm doing it again. My concentration is terrible. I put it down to talking, talking too much. And then I think what we'll do is if it's a success, we'll look at doing more. And it might be that perhaps we look at doing some in a different, you know, a different part of the country as well. But the good thing is we're quite close to the motorway here. So we've got fairly easy access from everywhere. So we've got our little centerpiece and then we've got those two bits there. Now you don't need any more at the back because you're not going to see them. So what you need to do now is really just make sure that you trim them so that they're the same length either side. Now. I am going to show you two different ways of actually finishing off. The first is using these little collots. They remind me of clamshells. So if you look at the bottom, you've got a hole in the bottom. And then that part there is where you pop your jump ring. So what we do when we're using these is we pop the crimping chain up through the bottom of that you can just let that drop and then we're going to pop a crimp bead on the end now sometimes I like to put two crimp beads on so I'm just going to leave a little bit of space at the end now you will need to play it by ear a little bit because hopefully the collots that you've got will fit two. Now the reason why I've got two is because they sit a lot sturdier whereas when there's one they sort of rock about a little bit too much. So I'm going to close that up and there you've got your neat finish at the end. Okay, I'm going to do the same the other side. Now I know that it takes two, I'm going to pop both on at the same time. Oh, now I need my collot on first. Sue puts two on as well. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? It's a lot sturdier. So Linda is travelling, it's about an, an hour and a half for Linda. So that's like driving to Plymouth for me. Well, we can't wait to see you. 
Oh, where are we? And I'm sure there'll be plenty of laughter. There's never a dull moment when we meet. Right. So let's push that up. I You could do it with your fingers, but I think it gets a much clearer seal on them by actually using your chain nose pliers now my top tip to you is do not use thin jump rings because now the ones i've got on order the collots i've got on order for the next batch have actually got two loops on them for extra security these if you've got them like these they're single there's a single loop now do make sure that you put on there a thick jump ring if you put on a thin fine jump ring what will happen is it will make its way to any little like sl slot that you've got in the jump ring and it will undo itself so at the 12 o'clock so have the join at 12 o'clock or the slit I should say open it with two sets of pliers and pop that on the end collar now close that up make sure it's a good seal I squeeze that on the join as well now I'm going to use a smaller jump ring for the end that I've got the clasp because I think it just looks a little bit neater to not have so much silver on it. So jump ring and a clasp and then close that up. So I'll just show you this and then I'm going to show you some different clots that I've got that I came across and I thought I rather like those. I really love that colour. Oh, I was going to show you crimp covers as well, so we'll do that in a second. Okay, so it's a really lovely, neat ending. And if you go into sort of the likes of Marks and Spencers, um, New Look, places like that, you'll be able to see that they've made similar projects using the same technique. And it really is lovely. And it, it's really quick and simple. Right, now these were the other collots that I came across and I thought, you know what, I am loving these. I'm going to put some of these up on the site probably tomorrow now. Um, now, these are side opening ones. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. So I've got a double loop at the top. Let's just try and get in a bit closer. So basically you close it from the side. So rather than having a hole at the bottom, you slot it in. So hopefully when I actually make it up, you'll be able to see what I mean. So again, I'm going to pop two crimps on there. I'm glad you're loving the necklace, Francis. I think that would actually suit you quite well. It might be coming your way. So this time I don't need to put the end bit on. So we put that. Can you see? Right, so that's open. If you imagine a shell with the joins at the back and closing the shell up. I close it up a little bit with my fingers and then I close the rest up with my pliers. I'm not doing a very good job, I have to say. There we go. There's actually a little ledge on there as well. Now I'm not sure whether this one is going to just have one ring, but that's okay. But I really like that. So there we go. It looks the same. The difference is with this. So that's that's really sturdy. I like the fact that you've got a double side to it. I, I thought those were brilliant. So I'm going to put some of those online 
tomorrow. So you would just do the same thing again. You would pop a clasp one end and a ring or a ring and extender the other. I'm not sure what they're called, whether they're called like side collots. So yeah, let me show you the difference. So visually, I don't know if you could really tell which is which. So this one is the side one and the one on this side is the one where you go up from the base of it. So that's that. Let's just have a little look at crimp covers, shall we? Now, I don't have much of a stash in at the moment, but a lot of you find that you've got these in your box that perhaps you don't use. This is an opportunity to use them because it looks rather lovely. So this is how they look. Now, you can buy crimp cover uh, crimping pliers. Not keen on them myself. Um, I know we had a bit of a discussion about this before. Right, so I've just hooked that in over my crimp bead. And sometimes easier said than done, I'm not going to lie. Can be fiddly. That is not the neatest one in the world. That's okay. And then, ah, so Jackie uses the, is that the side collots, Jackie, on ball chains? It just catches the ball on the end. Good show. Right, so I'm just clipping that. These are tough. I'm making a right, oh, not making this look very easy, am I? Maybe you might find put those special pliers easier, but they actually look quite nice, don't they? How are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing fine for time. I might try a different pair of pliers with them. Let me try my um, bigger pliers. But you wouldn't know really that they're not beads does that make sense you know they're meant to kind of look like beads what i like about these as well is sometimes the crimps can be a little bit sharp perhaps against your skin if you just catch them slightly wrong right that seems to work better with my bigger pliers but if you've got any questions or any suggestions any thoughts about what else you could do with the crimping chain? Um, you could also make bracelets. Now I did a multi-strand bracelet as well with this. Now with the, particularly with the side opening one, you could get a couple of lengths of chain. So you could maybe have a uh, a multi-strand necklace or a multi-chain where's that gone I'm all fingers and thumbs today right there we go It's nice though, doesn't it? I might as well finish it off, hadn't I? We're okay for time. It's not very often I finish off my demonstration pieces because I get very... Uh, I don't get impatient per se, but I'm always conscious that it's a bit boring to watch. But these won't take long, says she. Flaming cat has swiped a piece of my pizza. How rude, Linda. 
I've never come across a cat that likes pizza before. Maybe, is it ham and pineapple? <laughs> That's a good question. Francis is asking if you make an anklet for a gift or to sell, how long would you make it? Not really sure, actually. I've never measured my ankle. There must be a generic size that's online. And I suppose what you could do is you could have an extender on it. Oh my goodness, don't look too closely at this. It's not my best. I have a mushroom. Never boring to watch. Oh, bless you. Oh, Nikki's cat likes pizza. Oh, we always get on to food, don't we? And fish and chips. Should make it a fish and chip Thursday. Even though I don't have fish and chips. Oh, interesting. Uh, Jackie said to make between 9 and 10 inches for anklets. Oh, that went well. What? Oh, no, we didn't. Ugh too good to be true wasn't it too good to be true it fell off how rude right i don't think i'm gonna get that back in nah not worth it try another one try another one and then what we'll do is we'll look at the earrings earrings are pretty simple Oh, last one. I'm all fingers and thumbs now. Drum roll, last one. Now nah, that one's at a funny angle. Oh, there we go. Right finished piece right that went well you didn't see that did you <laughs> it moved it's not meant to move right okay let's pop that to one side let's have a bash at the earring shall we we'll use whoops let's use my beading mat for that this is also quite good for using up like your odds and ends of any crimping chain you've got so we just do the long ones for now right so we've got a couple of earring hooks right Crimp beads. Right, I'm just going to try it with one on this time. Oh, I'm glad you like. Let's do one with, actually these are easier to close up with your fingers initially and the last bit with your pliers. So that's the side on one. Now what you need to make sure is that it actually sits, there's a little crevice that's just in the middle there. So you could actually open up the earring hook. Now hold on to the ball thing open it up at the side and you can clip that in close that back up and then what can we do let's now you don't necessarily need a crimp bead above it because you're not really going to be doing any more work above it if that makes sense it's 
Now obviously you can make that as long as sh or short as you wish. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. Now, question from Francis. Can you use any type of crimp beads and can you get both gold and silver chain? Yes to the gold and silver chain. I've got limited stocks in the gold at the moment, but I've got more on its way. I've also got those side-on collots as well for the gold and the silver. Crimp beads, yes, you can use any type of crimp beads. These are 2 mil crimp beads. Uh, you can use the tubular, you can use the circular, whatever works for you. So that's the long one. Let's have a look at the circular one. Now, this one is slightly different. Now, I've got some bigger crimp beads that fit over both. Now, I have got some in stock and I'll try and remember to pop those online tomorrow so let's so I'll pop these on first whoops let's pop the beads on first easier said than done I'm not gonna lie whoops that's a bigger one than I want says she dropping them all start again shall we right so what i did for these loopy loops is I actually got a bigger crimp bead that I popped both of those through but I le left a little bit of room but you know what I am wondering whether or not I can crimp that further up and put the side colour on there now I'm just going to try something out to see if it works, so bear with. It might not. If it, if it doesn't work, we'll just start again. Now I've actually just popped that crimp bead up the top there. I've got one of these side-on ones. The only thing with that is this little this little side on thing doesn't quite do you see what I mean? Don't know if it sits quite right. Where you've got quite a, a small slot in the middle I'm not sure if that works. So I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to show you how I did it before. Always good to try these things, possibly not live on air, but you know, it is me. So I'm going to crimp that across both, like so, with the thicker crimp bead. Now this is where you need to be super careful, is... I'm actually going to cut one of those off, one of those chains off, but the amount of times I cut both off. So I am going to pop that through the bottom part of the collot. 
I'm going to, this one is a wee bit fiddlier. I'm going to pop two crimp beads on there. Oops. Or you could put the side on one, if that makes sense as well, if you wish. One. Just open that up a bit so I can get inside. got a little bit of excess on the end so I'm going to trim that off. What I'd recommend you do is you make the other one to match before you pop the colour on and then I pop the earring hook on. So there you go. So clever. So much you can do with this. So you've got both different types as well. So you've got lots to think about. So let's just show you up close. Let's take these off of the bustier and pop the one that we've made today on there. But let me know whether or not it's got your creativity flowing. You know, is there something you, you think you're going to have a go at making following this? So there we go. That's the one that we did today during the tutorial. As you can see, it's really neat at the back. There's nothing at the back that you need. Nice little touches with the crimp covers. A bit fiddlier than I thought. And then you've got the earrings. I like that. I like the bigger ones. And I think if you like me and you've got longer hair, sometimes the smaller ones get lost in them. Or you've got the long dangle earrings as well. You can make them as short as you want to. And then if you want to make a bracelet, just follow the same pattern. You might want a bit of a fuller sort of centre part for the beads. There's nothing wrong with actually filling most of it up either, you know, on the crimping chain. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Do not forget to share any of your makes in our beaders group. Let's get sharing. And also, if you want to book your ticket, reserve your e-ticket, then do book that online. And that's it. Have a good evening, everybody, and I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.